Come ride the little train that is rolling down the tracks to the junction. Forget about your cares, it is time to relax at the junction. Lots of curves, you bet, and even more when you get to the junction. Petticoat Junction. There's a little hotel called the Shady Rest at the junction. Petticoat Junction. It is run by Kate. Come and be her guest at the junction. Petticoat Junction. And that's Uncle Joe. He's a moving kind of slow at the junction. Petticoat Junction. Not too bad. A few tomatoes and eggs and a cabbage or two caught the tender. I've never seen such an angry mob. Everybody yelling, get the coach, kill the coach. Oh, poor Uncle Joe. Well, losing the biggest game of the year, 84 to nothing, ain't exactly the way to win friends. I hate to think what the back of the train looks like. <laughs> Safe to come out now? Yes, Mr. Bedlow. I'm terribly sorry you had to go through all this just because our team lost. Oh, that's all right. Remember, lad, it's not whether you win or lose. It's how you play the game. You play lousy. Yeah. I got that impression. <laughs> I'm sorry, kids. But remember, it's how you play the game. Yeah, that's what Mr. Bedlow just said. Bedlow, he's on this train? Oh, sourpuss? The vice president of the railroad? He went through this garbage barrage. Took two eggs right in the kisser before he got the window closed. Oh! <laughs> there goes the hootable cannonball. You'll junk it for sure now. Mr. Bedlow? Don't blame Charlie and Floyd and their train. I mean, your train. It's not their fault that Hooterville High lost every single game this year and the people finally got fed up. It's his fault. My uncle, the coach. Oh, Mrs. Bradley, it's nobody's fault. It's like the game of life. Sometimes we win, sometimes we lose. But the important thing is to take both with a smile. Oh, I don't blame you for being mad. Here, take Mr. Bedlow up to the hotel, give him the bridal suite next to the bath and give him anything he wants with no charge. He's our guest. No, no, I insist on paying. Oh, you're going to feel so much better when you have a nice hot bath. Betty Jo, you clean up his suit while he's freshening up for dinner. Now, hurry now. No, 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 don't fuss over me, girls. Charlie, there goes the meanest, most. <laughs> Did he say something nice? <laughs> Sounded like it from here. Charlie? There's something rotten in Denmark. There's something rotten in Hooterville, too. And I think all of it hit this train. <laughs> you can come out now, coach. Okay, Joe. <laughs> Is it safe? Reasonably, you still got to face Kate. Oh, hi, Kate. Hi. Well... Hooterville Hornets dropped another close one today. Close is right. Close to a hundred to nothing. <laughs> this is the last year I'm going to coach that ungrateful Hooterville outfit. You can bet on that. This may be the last year for everything. The hotel, the train. What are you talking about? You know who was on this train and got hit by two eggs meant for you? Who? Mr. Bean himself. Homer Bedlow. But he don't scare me none. I'll face up to him just like I faced up to that angry mob. <laughs> you see, 
They're directors of the railroad? Two of them, big shot eastern fellows, come in a private plane. Now they're going to board the cannonball here in Hooterville tomorrow morning for an inspection trip. And Bedlow put him up to it, huh? He's awaiting for him at the Shady Rest. Oh, that sneaky rat. Somebody's got to warn Kate and the boys. Well, how? There ain't no train, no phone, no road, no... The hand car. Yeah, send Herbie Bates. Oh, no, no, he got chased out of town along with his coach. Sam, you can't pump that car clear to Kate's hotel. But I can try. I said to myself, Homer Bedlow, you've got to go back to that wonderful little town of Hooterville and ride that wonderful little train to that wonderful little hotel and visit with all those wonderful people. I'll say one thing for you, Homer. You're a good loser, but we really outsmarted you when you tried to scrap the cannonball. Uncle Joe, uh, Mr. Bedlow doesn't want to talk about that. Kate, women don't understand the kind of sportsmanship that goes on between men. Now, Homer and me locked horns, and he got the worst of it. But he ain't mad, are you, Homer? Not a bit. Of course, I guess you did look kind of silly back at the main office. Certainly did. <laughs> See how good he's taking it? He don't mind being beaten by a better man. Uncle Joe, um, I need you to help me move something into the lobby. Uh, sure, Kate. What do you want to move? You. <laughs> planning to be with us, Mr. Bedlow? Oh, I think along about noon tomorrow ought to do it. Oh. Isn't that about the time you boys get the train back from Hooterville? Yes, sir, and we'll be right on time for you, Mr. Bedlow. Oh, no, 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 no. Take your time. Be late. <laughs> I don't mind. Hear that, Charlie? We can sleep late. Floyd, we gotta get up early and clean the train. It's a mess. We'll help you. Sure we will, Charlie. Oh, no, no, no. You young people shouldn't waste a good Saturday morning cleaning a train. Besides, it'll be a good object lesson for the people of Hooterville to see that train the way it is. Remind them of how ugly mob violence can be. No, no, no. The messier it looks, the better. I tell you, that man's up to no good. He's out for revenge. Well, now, if he was a woman, I'd agree with you. Never turn your back on a woman. They're sneaky, cunning, and treacherous. Thanks. But a man is different, so stop worrying about Bedlow. Uncle Joe, you tell Floyd and Charlie to meet me down at the train. I'm going into town and talk to Sam Drucker. What about? About the price of horseradish. <laughs> well, at least I got you to stop worrying about Bedlow. <laughs> I can stop pumping. Oh, no. Ooh, what, what? Watch the blisters. Oh, I'm sorry. Who is it, Kate? Sam Drucker. Uh, listen, is Bedlow up at the hotel? Yeah. Come on up and say hello. He's changed, Sam. Nicest fella you ever want to meet. Horseradish. <laughs> well, you can talk to Kate about that later. Come on up and visit Bedlow. No, listen to me. Bedlow is here for only one reason. He's got a scheme that'll finish this train once and for all. You hear that, Uncle Joe? Yeah. And it don't surprise me none. You know, I was suspicious of him the minute he walked in. <laughs> City railroad directors see the Hooterville cannonball in the morning. She's gonna be shining like a new penny from cowcatcher to caboose. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Shh. Mr. Bedlow's in the lobby. Now, come on, get your buckets. Let's go. Yeah. Betty Jo, listen, you and Herbie help Floyd and Charlie scrub down the locomotive. Okay? Now, Bobby Joe, you and Bill. 
Where's Billy Joe? She didn't like the way her blue jeans fit her, so she's taking them in through the... Oh. Uh... <laughs> Let's go. We only got till daybreak. <laughs> Oh, no, Sam. No, 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 no. You, you've done your part. You go to bed and rest those blisters. Not me, Kate. I want to be in and foil and bed low all the way. <laughs> Thank you, Sam. He dozed off. I think it was your eggnog that did it. Well, I thought it would. I put a half a bottle of cooking sherry in it. I wondered how he could go to sleep while I was telling him the story about my wooden Indian. I was telling him all about my great-great-uncle, Kit Carson. How he carved it out of solid oak with a hunting knife given to him by this old Indian chief when he was just a boy living in the woods down Uncle in South Joe, East. Oh, you're putting me to sleep, and I got work to do. And so have you. So grab a bucket and head down to the train. Kate, hmm? don't you think somebody should stay here and keep an eye on Bedlow? Well, I'm going to do it. I got work to do here in the kitchen. Did you set his watch ahead? Yeah, set it ahead till midnight. <laughs> How about the other clocks? Oh, I forgot. Here, I'll start with this one. Say, where is everybody? Oh, Uncle Joe, get this stuff out of sight. Here. Mrs. Bradley, why'd everybody disappear to? Shh. Everybody's in bed asleep. <laughs> it can't be at this time of night. It's... Holy smokes, it's after midnight. Shh, you wake everybody up. There must be something the matter with my watch. It can't be this late. Well, it is, and you should be in bed, too. I'm not sleepy. I'll make you some more eggnog. Oh, that's darn good eggnog, but I don't want you to go to all that trouble. Oh, there's no trouble at all. I can't believe I slept for three hours. Is there a clock in here? Well, they just, I'm so ashamed it's so dirty, you can't tell what time it is. <laughs> there you are. Why do you need a one? What's all the commotion down here? Can a fella get a night's sleep? <laughs> Mr. Bedlow, what's the meaning of this? Alone with my niece here in the middle of the night. How far is this gone, Kate? Are you prepared to marry this woman? Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. I just came in here. She was just going to make me some more eggnog. Well, I think you've had enough to drink already. These carryings on might go up in the city, but out here we don't allow any hanky-panky with our women. <laughs> hanky-panky? Well, you get to your bedroom and stay there. And just be glad I didn't have my shotgun handy. Please explain to him that I haven't got any romantic interest in you. Would I be telling him the truth, Homer? Yes. <laughs> well, you have been extra nice to me on this trip. What other reason could you have? What other reason? Now, let me tell you something. Oh, good night. <laughs> and don't let me catch you out of your room again tonight, or I'll shoot first and ask questions later. <laughs> oh, Joe, you were wonderful. Now, let's go on down the train and get to work. Okay. Hmm? I'm all dressed for bed, and I'm asleep on my feet. I... Let's go. <laughs> All right, gang, that does it for the outside. Now let's see how Uncle Joe is doing inside. Uncle Joe? How'd it go, Kate? That big mess come off the seats? No, nope. there it sits, fast asleep. <laughs> How he can sleep on those hard, splattered-up backbreakers is beyond me. Say, Charlie, can you and Floyd unbolt these seats and get them out of here? Well, yeah, Kate, but wouldn't it be easier to wake him up and let him walk out? Well, this is not what I had in mind. Look, go get your tools and take everything out of this coach. Everything? Everything. Those two big city railroad directors are going to get the surprise of their lives. <laughs> That's funny. I could have sworn there was a chair and couch there last night. <laughs> Train leaving on track one. <laughs>
Not after today. <laughs> Thought you might like some company for breakfast, Joe Carson. <laughs> Very funny. <laughs> Ready for breakfast. <laughs> the Hooterville Cannonball is due in one minute. Bedlow told us it's never been on time yet. <laughs> Here she comes. Hooterville! you enjoy your ride, madam? Sonny, that's the finest train ride I ever had in my life. <laughs> Smooth as glass all the way. Well, thank you, madam. You must ride with us again. <laughs> you, you bet I will, Sonny. <laughs> all aboard the Hooterville Cannonball, gentlemen. There was no one in the station to sell us a ticket. Part of the satisfaction guaranteed service. We collect the fare at the end of the ride only if you're happy. Hey, that sounds great. Sounds like very bad business to me. Word! <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Good morning, gentlemen. Welcome aboard train number three, the Hooterville Cannonball. I'm your hostess, Miss Bradley. How do you do? Hello. Your engineer for this trip is Mr. Charles Pratt, a veteran of 35 years at the throttle. Your fireman is Mr. Floyd Smoot. And your conductor is Mr. Joseph Carson. We will be cruising at a safe, comfortable speed of 40 miles an hour. Any delicious hot meal will be served en route. If there's anything I can do to make your trip more comfortable or enjoyable, you have only to ask. Thank you. Shine, young fellow. Thank you, sir. <laughs> hey, John. Do you notice the porter smock? Like they wear in Europe. Yeah. The service on this train is a lot like the crack continental trains, too. Oh, come now, man. You can't compare the Hooterville Cannonball to, say, uh, the Train Bleu. Oh, you know, the blue train from Paris to Nice. Well, no. I happen to hear that, sir. What has the blue train got that we haven't got? Well, besides the shoe shine, you can get a haircut, a manicure. Herbie, a porter, tell the personnel director to send in one of our barbers and a manicurist immediately. What? <laughs> Quickly, boy. Pepper. Mom? Mm -hmm. Bobby's ready to entertain. Oh, good. Oh, Bobby, that's kind of brief. Well, I wore it in the Hoodieville High Fallings. Oh, well, uh... Oh, hiya, Herbie. Uh, how's it going? Well, fine. Until Uncle Joe promised him a barber and a manicurist. What? <laughs> Sam, did you ever give a haircut? No. Well, it's the first time for everything. <laughs> Herbie, give him your smock. <laughs> here, don't you take over here. Bobby Joe, hand me my sewing basket. Yeah. Sam? Betty Joe? Did you ever give a manicure? A locomotive engineer? <laughs> How about you, Bobby Joe? Well, I do my own nails. Well, now you're doing someone else's. But I haven't got my stuff with me. Make do. Buffer. Orange sticks. What about nail polish? What about nail polish? Uh, oh. Here we are. Vanilla extract? Keep the label in. <laughs> Right out there, some of the most unusual scenery in the world. I don't see anything so unusual about it. Well, well you notice that windmill out there. Well, I'll tell you about that windmill. Oh, oh, here comes the barber and the manicure. Well, 
Well, I'll be darned. I'd rather be manicured. <laughs> the foreign situation. Which one? <laughs> Take your pick. <laughs> there you are, sir. Huh? Your haircut is finished, sir. Haircut, yeah. Oh, now, where's the mirror? The mirror? Oh, it, it looks fine. Right, conductor? Uh, great. Oh, must be I... a mirror someplace. Oh. Barbara, come here. Yes, sir. That is the best haircut I ever had. <laughs> Thank you. My barber could certainly take lessons from you. <laughs> Say, Max, how's your manicures? Sensational. <laughs> this whole train is sensational. You said it. John, do you think maybe Bedloe drinks? I don't know if he does now, but he may start after I get through with him. <laughs> I'm telling you that when John Fisher gets through with a hootable cannonball, it'll be nothing but a pile of scrap. He'll rip up those tracks with his bare hands. There's the only man I know that's meaner than me. <laughs> These local yokels thought they had me over a barrel, thought they had me outsmarted. Well, nobody gets the best of me. I never forget, and I never forgive. I'll see every last one of them in the poorhouse. Come to think of it, I'm as mean as John Fisher. Maybe meaner. <laughs> Well, she makes her run through the dead of winter, through the summer, spring, and fall. Neither cold nor heat nor blood can stop her. She's the Hooterville Cannonball. <laughs> Betty Jo, maybe the gentleman would like another helping. Oh, no, 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 please. I've had five. Six for me? What was that delicious concoction? Just chicken and dumplings. Country style. Specialty of the Hooterville Cannonball Chef. I'd like to meet him. Would you ask him to come in? But he never leaves the kitchen. You actually have a kitchen in there. He's small but efficient. <laughs> Let's go see it. It may serve as a model for our new diesel streamliners. Good idea. You gentlemen connected with some railroad? Well, as a matter of fact, we are two of the directors of this railroad. Oh, dear, my goodness. Did you hear that? Why, if we'd have known that, we'd have given you our first-class service. What have we been getting? Economy tourist class. Max, there's no two ways about it. This is the greatest train on wheels. Far none. And we've ridden them all. Wait till I get my hands on Bedlow. <laughs> I heard the cannonball pull in three hours late. I'll bet that really burned old John Fisher. Fisher? Oh, that's the name of the gentleman that's waiting down at the train to talk to you. Yeah, him and a fella named of Thornton. They're going to give you a new position with the railroad. <laughs> Who says that meanness doesn't pay off? <laughs> Floyd and me sure do appreciate this, Mr. Fisher. Yeah, Mr. Fisher. The kind of train you boys run, you deserve it. Snap to it, Bedlow. You won't even keep this job. <laughs> yes, sir, boss. Where'd I go wrong? <laughs>
Junction. This has been a Filmways presentation.